Okay, so let's talk about Newtonian fluids. That's what we have. So we have the term of pressure and this term, which in the more general case can be expressed as a product of a fourth order tensor times the strain. Look, if you forget that, don't this recall you the same that we had in elasticity? The definition of linear elasticity was sigma equal c times epsilon in that case. And here, you know, you have epsilon, you have d, which is epsilon dot, typically, the velocity of change of the strains. That is typically what is typical of fluids. In a fluid, the stress is not depending on the strain. Imagine that, that I've, I've, I've just uh, introduced my hand into a fluid. Okay, I'm producing larger strains. But if we do, I do it smoothly, I don't have almost no resistance to that. Because D is very small, so D being very small, that term is negligible. But if I just impact on the fluid, then I have a large reaction because this term is no longer negligible. Because C being the same, D, D is very high. The rate of the strength, the rate of change, the velocity of change of the strains is very large. This is typical in a fluid. A fluid produces stresses as we have velocities, large velocities, light, large rate of strains. If we just deform a fluid in a small way, very slow, then the fluid, apart from pressures, which is normally a small part, has really very little stresses. Uh, uh, instead, in a solid, in a solid it's different. I mean, in a solid, even if I just produce small deformations, if I produce, let me, a low, some light deformation, if I produce a, a slow deformations, but large, the, the bottle has large strains. Even it's not very slow, because the stresses depend not on the rate of the strains, but on the amount, total amount of the strains. That is the fundamental difference in the Euclidean equation. Because, on the other hand, they resemble, really resemble each other pretty much. So this term, in principle, apart from this, resembles the one that we had in solid. And that one, well, in general, is relatively small. Even sometimes it's negligible. So, I mean, uh, that's the big difference. Again, now, if we want to talk about an isotropic fluid, then this tensor has to be isotropic. So it has to have the structure of a fourth order isotropic fluid, isotropic tensor, depending on two parameters. Look, even the name London mu is the same that we had for solids. The only point is that they are no longer elast elastic parameters, as the Lamest parameter that we call that. Now these are viscosities. And that's the first time that the word viscosity appears here. Look, this term here, in general, depends on viscosities, London mu. If this viscosity is equal to zero, or they are negligible, what can we say about this term? What can we say? For null viscosities, null London mu, what happens with this term? Zero. So the fluid is perfect. That is what relates a perfect fluid is a non-viscous fluid. Okay, that is the is a, is a point. Well, again, by replacing this structure into that, look, we, we, we just recovered something that, I mean, it's, it's the same structure that we had for elastic fluids, uh, for elastic solids. The stresses equal lambda, trace of D instead of epsilon, times one, plus two mu times D instead of epsilon, plus, and that is, again, the newness, uh, the term due to the pressure. Okay? Another difference with respect to solids is that, in general, the elastic parameters, the, the Lamet parameters that you have in elasticity, are typically constant. They also depend on temperature, for instance, or, or on density, but they little depend on, uh, on that. Here, in general, the viscosity depends on density and temperature much more than uh, the elastic material properties of the, the Lamé coefficients, though. Okay, so we have constant the viscosity something that depends on temperature. In fact, if we just uh, heat an oil in 
the pan, for instance, you see that as you heat it, it's much, much less viscous than in cold oil. Okay? I mean that you are, some of you are cooked, so you realize that at the beginning when you're doing an omelet, so if as you put the, the, the oil on the, on the pan, you see that, that, that there is a certain difficulty of moving the oil on the pan. But when it's hot, we are doing french fries or that, the fluid is much more, uh, less viscous. And that's because that that's the dependence of the fluid. Okay. The dependence of these properties on temperature and also density. Well, at this point we can talk about the different pressures that we have defined. What is the relation in the case of a Newtonian fluid, isotropic Newtonian fluid? Well, it's just a matter of operation. That's the constitutive equation that we had here. We operate on that. We just obtain the trace of sigma. The trace of sigma is what? By definition, minus three times the mean pressure. But then, by doing the trace of that, by operating by that, you obtain something that the trace that that part moving to the other side, the pressure, the hydro, the thermodynamic pressure is equal to the hydrostatic pressure, sorry, the mean pressure, plus this term which comes from that, these viscous terms. And this term is called the bulk viscosity, K. Again, we have, uh, 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 remember in elasticity, we have something that we call a bulk modulus which was defined as lambda plus two-thirds of mu. So here it appears, but as a bull viscosity. So finally, that's the, the first relation. The mean pressure, the mean pressure, and the hydrostatic pressure are not the same, but are related with each other in terms of this. Look, then, this relation here, if we combine with the conservation, with the with the conservation equation which is the continuity equation, okay? The continuity equation is that we can solve for the divergence of B, which is minus one over rho over that. We also know something that we have seen several times, that the trace of the rate of strain tensor is the divergence of B. Combined with that, we can write that equation in several ways. First, Hydrostatic uh, thermodynamic pressure equal hydrostatic pre uh, mean pressure plus this term. Or by replacing the trace of D as the variance of B, or that can be written in the, the or, or, uh, replacing this equation here, we can obtain this pressure P equal P bar minus K, K over rho over differential of rho with respect to D. And these equations provide insight about when the, the, the three types of pressure are, the similar, are similar. For instance, first, fluid addressed. What happens with the fluid addressed? The velocity is equal to zero. Well, more general, because velocity depends on the system of reference. Velocities are uniform. The gradient of velocity is equal to zero. So the divergence of the velocity is zero, so this term is zero, and P is equal to P bar. Since then, in that case, the mean pressure is equal to the hydrostatic pressure, the three pressures in a fluid addressed are the same. So in a fluid addressed, in our case, a fluid in a reservoir. In a reservoir, there is no sense in talking about hydrostatic pressure, hydro, uh, 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 the hydrodynamic pressure, uh, the thermodynamic pressure and the mean pressure, they are the same, they are the same. Okay, imagine that the fluid is not addressed, but the fluid is incompressible. What does incompressible mean? That this differential, the variation of the density, the material derivative of density with respect to T is equal to zero. So this term is also zero. And again, the, hydro, hydro, the thermodynamic pressure is equal to the mean pressure, but, but, no longer equal to the hydrostatic pressure. Because the hydrostatic pressure is only defined at fluid addressed, and that fluid is not addressed. So, in incompressible fluids, even when they are moving at no rest, then the thermodynamic pressure and the mean pressure are the same. Okay? That's, that's, that, that's not so trivial. 
because there are viscosities. I'm not talking about it, it's visco viscous or not viscous. And then, in what other cases these two pressures are equal? Well, imagine that this term, k, is zero. Then, even if this term is not zero, even if the, the fluid is, is, is moving and it's not incompressible, but this term cancels just because this coefficient is zero. That is what is called the Stokes condition. Sometimes, to simplify problems, we make the assumption that the, the bulk viscosity is zero. So in that case, from this assumption, again, the hydrostatic pressure and the mean pressure have, are the same, take the same value. Okay?